have your Bibles, and I hope you do. Take those out. I'll meet you in John chapter 12. I was telling someone earlier that uh, in January of the year 2000, you remember when all the computers were supposed to shut down on, on, on Y2K? Yeah, everything that we owned was in the back of a U-Haul trailer. Uh, we were moving from Abilene, Texas to Sterling, Colorado. It was my first uh, vocational ministry assignment. And we got snowed in a little town in southeast Colorado for a few days. A, a much needed time to cry and let go of our past, our former life, uh, all those coaching dreams and aspirations that I had, uh, this being snowed in in, uh, in southeast Colorado for a few days was much needed. But we arrived in Sterling, and one of the biggest and I would say most difficult adjustments that we had to make was it getting dark at four in the afternoon. And, and the sun not coming up until 7.30 the next morning. You, you know winters here. Uh, it was difficult. I can remember days, Catherine coming home, almost in tears, feeling like, man, the day is gone. I haven't even seen my kids all day. It was just difficult transi transition for us, it being dark so much. Christmas lights have become something special for uh, for me since, uh, more special for me since moving to Colorado because Christmas lights, they light up our neighborhoods, they light up our house. Uh, Y'all probably don't live in the same neighborhood that I do because I live next door to the Griswolds. <laughs> if you've seen the movie Christmas Vacation, you know what I'm talking about. We can't compete. It's as if the little corner that I live on, our neighbors try to compete to see who can make their house the brightest house, put the most blow-up things in their yard. It's light. It, it, it lights up the neighborhood in this dark, gloomy season of the year. Christmas lights have become, become something uh, special for me uh, personally because I think they're beautiful. As you know, we've been spending this Christmas season, this Advent season, looking at Christmas from the vantage point of Jesus. We, we've been taking the words of Jesus himself as he considers that Christmas morning when he was born of a virgin and laid in a manger We've been looking at it from his perspective. We've been taking his own words, those places in Scripture where he says, this is why I came. You know, Jesus has always been. Now, yes, on that day he was born of a virgin, but he's always been. This just happens to be the day that he came into the world. He stepped out of heaven and came into the world. And so today we look at another passage in this Christmas season, it's in John chapter 12, specifically verse 46 is the verse that we will be looking at. Jesus says this, he says, I have come into the world as light so that whoever believes in me may not remain in darkness. Here Jesus is telling us what Christmas is really about. Jesus was born that first Christmas to bring light into darkness. Now, I told Greg a while ago, I'm aiming for 20 minutes today. And he looked at me like, yeah, right. <laughs> Good luck with that, Joel. You know, listen, I, you, you're here today, many of you are here today, and you're thinking about family that's on their way into town. Maybe family still at the house you're thinking about food that needs to be made for tomorrow. You're thinking about gifts that we get to open tomorrow. Your, your mind may be everywhere else. But today, I believe we're all here, and you may be watching online. And I don't want you to miss the light that has come into the world. 
It would be a terrible tragedy if we were more excited about Christmas lights on our house and on our Christmas tree than being excited about the light that has come into the world. We see in our passage that, that uh, John gives us a, an introductory description of what Jesus was about to say. You see it in verse 44. He says that Jesus cried out. That introductory phrase, John only uses that two other times in his gospel account. The first time is in John chapter 7. When he's, he, he declares to people, he says, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scriptures have said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Man, these are words of hope. Jesus came, man. He wanted, he wanted to provide people that were spiritually starving, people that were spiritually thirsty. He wanted to provide them living water. And so he cried out. He, it was, I'm serious. What I'm about to say is serious, he cried out. The other time that he uses that phrase, that John uses that as an introductory phrase, is in John chapter 11. And it's actually that verse where, where the, the Pharisees, the rulers of the church, they turned on Jesus. That was the, one of the critical moments where they turned on Jesus and said, man, we got to get rid of this dude. It's when Jesus cried out and said, Lazarus, come forth. And people were amazed. So when we get to our text today, it's the third time, it's the, one of the three times that Jesus cries out. And you and I need to make sure we understand what he's about to say matters. Now it's, there's passion that's behind it. I've been reading it all week, kind of uh, in the voice that we use, that I usually use when Jesus is talking, and it's that, I have come, this, this authoritative. But, but I'm trying to read it today with, he cried out. I mean, man, listen, you've got to hear this kind of voice. So... As we hear one more time today that Jesus cries out that he has come into the world as light so that whoever believes in him will not remain in darkness. The time has come for us to hear these words and to step out of darkness into his marvelous light. Into his marvelous light. So I'm going to ask a couple of questions today and then we'll be done. Now, I know when I mentioned that a few minutes ago, some of you started a timer on your watch. <laughs> Show me some grace. But I know you got things you got to get to, and I don't need to hold you up from that. I'm just as excited about it as you are. But let's not miss the light. That's why we're here. So let, if you're able, will you stand with me as I read God's word out of John chapter 12? I'm going to start in verse 42. Our text today is, starts in 44, but I want to go before that to verse 42. Nevertheless, many, even the, of the authorities, believed in him, but, but for fear of the Pharisees, they did not confess it, so that they would not be put out of the synagogue. For they love the glory that comes from man more than the glory that comes from God. Can we stop there for a second? Can I just tell you? There's no such thing as a secret disciple. No such thing. Your relationship with Jesus is extremely personal, very personal, but it was never intended for it to be private. Man, we're to shine the light of hope, the light of Jesus to the world. There's no such thing as a private Christian. Let your light shine. Wasn't there a song that we used to sing in in VBS? Uh, You know it. This little light of mine. Sing it with me. I'm going to let it shine. Come on. This little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine. There's no such thing as a secret disciple. Maybe you appreciate and want 
the praise of men more than you want the praise of God. That's something to consider. So let's jump into our text. Verse 44. And Jesus cried out and said, Whoever believes in me, believes not in me, but in him who sent me. And whoever sees me, sees him who sent me. I've come into the world as light, so that whoever believes in me may not remain in darkness. If, if, if anyone hears my words and does not keep them, I, I don't judge him. For I did not come to judge the world, but to save the world. The one who rejects me and does not receive my words has a judge. For, for the words, for the word that I have spoken will judge him on the last day. For I have not spoken on my own authority, but the authority of the Father who sent me has himself given me a commandment to say and what to speak. And I know that his commandment is eternal life. What I say, therefore, I say as the Father has told me. Father, I do ask that today, as we look into your word, on this Christmas Eve, that you would shine brightly in our lives, shine brightly into our heart. Father, if there are parts of us that want to remain secret followers, I pray that you would illuminate that today. If there's someone here today that is still walking in darkness, I pray that today would be the day that they step out of darkness and into your marvelous light. I pray this in your holy name. Amen. So the first question I want to ask today is, what does it mean that we are in darkness? Jesus said, I've come as light so that whoever believes in me may not remain, remain in darkness. Whether you know it or not, that is our spiritual condition that we are born into. We are born into darkness. But we don't have to stay there. Jesus has come as light. What does it mean that we are in darkness? You know that light and dark, that's a, one of John's favorite illustrations that he uses. John chapter 1, verse 5, uh, the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Darkness is opposed to light. It would overtake it if it could, but when light comes into the room, it has no chance. Even tonight, uh, in our candlelight service, we dim the lights, the room gets nearly dark, and we light a candle. And at that point, darkness has no chance. It can't overtake it. And the, and the candles start getting lit all around the room. And light overtakes darkness. John chapter 3, it's in the conversation with Nicodemus. Right after the famous verse, John 3, 16, in verse 19, it says, Men love the darkness rather than the light because their deeds are evil. So check this out. It's on your outline. Darkness is the realm of evil and sin. And it's the, it's the place that our hearts naturally turn. Our flesh naturally goes in that direction towards evil and sin. John chapter 12, John chapter 8, verse 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. So darkness is the realm of evil and sin. Light is the life that Jesus gives. Darkness is an eternal spiritual condition unless one does what our verse today talks about, believes in Jesus. We move from darkness to light. So if darkness is eternal separation from God, the light of Jesus, having that in our heart is eternal presence with God. Do you have the light today? I hope so. I hope so. So the bad news today is that without the light in our life, we are eternally separated from God. Do you have the light? Without understanding the nature of darkness, 
we are always, we always, we're always going to struggle to understand the meaning of Christmas. Jesus came into this world as light. Jesus came to shine light into darkness. The world was full of darkness and light came. We need to understand that. We need to know that. But Jesus says in our text, no one needs to remain there, not one second longer. You don't have to remain in darkness. That's what Christmas is for. It's to chase away darkness. I have come as light so that whoever believes in me may not remain in darkness. So what, is, what does it mean that we remain, that Jesus is light? It's the second question I want to answer. I'm sure that many of you are like me when you got married. You learned some things about your spouse that you never knew before. Can I get an amen? Amen. <laughs> Joel, you can walk out on that limb by yourself, man. (laughs) Yeah, like you knew everything about your spouse. Okay, you can stay there if you want. Hey, listen, one of the things that I learned about Catherine that I had no idea about. See, and Anna will know this, my sister. uh, We had Christmas tree in our house, but Christmas tree, as I remember it, it was not some big elaborate thing. Catherine grew up in a home where her grandmother would order decorated Christmas trees. So I went to her house that first Christmas that we were together, and I walked in the room, and it was like, oh, I mean, this tree is just, wow, wow. So that's what she grew up in. For me, we had a Christmas tree. Okay, it was cool. We had lights just like y'all do. Okay. One of the things that I learned about Catherine, and it really was a problem, it, seriously, yeah. It was approaching addiction. Not quite there. She loved putting lights on the tree. One year, early in our marriage, we lived in a small house, so small that we only put the limbs on the half of the tree and we would put it up against the wall. So, semicircle tree. You know what I'm talking about? We didn't even put the little limbs on this half. I'm not kidding. One year, she put 1,400 lights on half of a tree. The neighborhood would dim when she plugged the tree in. It was our space heater in our house. This is before LED light bulbs. Hey, we'd walk over and... Next to the tree. That was her thing. I I think that she's overcome that that addiction by now. Anyway, lights. What does it mean that Jesus came as light to the point that you and I, when she plugged the tree in, darkness had no chance in our entire neighborhood. When Jesus came into the world, darkness didn't have a chance. Our passage today is telling us we only need one light. Only one light to scatter the darkness of the sin and guilt in our lives. And his name is Jesus. In fact, it's telling us this is a... a, Blank on your outline there. There is only one light that can pierce the darkness of our spiritual condition. Jesus has come as light. It's the second thing I want us to see today. What Jesus did, what what Jesus meant when he said, I have come as light, and that is to pierce darkness and to pierce the darkness of your heart and your soul. That's why he's come. So what's he talking about? I came as light. Our text will help us understand that a little bit. Let's look back at it. First of all, how does Jesus shine his light? Look at, verses 40, look at verse 47. If anyone hears my words, circle my words, 
and does not keep them. I do not judge him, for I did not come to judge the world, but to save the world. One of the ways that Jesus penetrates my heart with light, penetrates your heart with light, penetrates the world with light, is through his word. I've said this a gazillion times, and I'll continue to say it. We will be, here at Community of Grace, a people of the word. We're going to stand on it. We're going to believe it. It's just who we are. And it's my encouragement to you that today to allow the words of Jesus, to allow the word of Scripture to light your life every day, to take it in every day and allow light to shine into those dark corners of your heart. Do you have any of those? Do you have any of those secret corners in, the, in, the, in your heart that, man, allow the light of Jesus, allow the word of God to penetrate those dark places? One of the ways that Jesus shines his light in my life and your life is through his word. And if the only time you're getting the word of God is on Sunday morning when I say, do you have your Bibles? And I hope you do. That ain't enough light. I want to encourage you. Get in the word every day before you walk out of the house. Man, allow the word of God to penetrate the darkness place, dark places of your heart. To shine. It will spiritually prepare you for the day. How we respond to God's word, how we respond to the words of Jesus, how we respond to the gospel of Jesus Christ impacts everything in our life. The way Jesus shines the light he came to give into your heart is through his gospel, through his word, through the scripture. But if Jesus' light pierces the darkness by his word, then those presents under the tree and those things that we need to cook this afternoon can wait just a few more minutes. I hope that we're not more excited about that than we are the word of God, than we are of Jesus, who came into the world as light. What a shame it would be if we decorate our homes with lights, our trees with lights, and we ourselves stay in darkness. That'd be a shame. It'd be a shame. So what does the light reveal? If it's, if it's, shining into our hearts, if it's shining into our lives, if it's shining into the world, what does it reveal? Verse 44, whoever believes in me, believes not in me, but in him who sent me. And whoever sees me, sees him who sent me. I've come into this world as life. Write this down. Jesus' light helps us see God. It helps us see God. No one comes to the Father except through me, he said in John chapter 10. To see Jesus is to see God. To see God is to see Jesus. You need the light of Christ shining into your heart. One more thing that it reveals and we finish. If you do not respond to his light by trusting him, by confessing to him, bowing before him, Trusting him with your life. His light will one day expose you. Look what it says. Verse 48. The one who rejects me and does not receive my word has a judge. The word I have spoken will judge him on the last day. Listen, friends. If you've trusted Jesus with your life. If, that, if God has shown his light into your heart and you have said, Jesus, I confess my sins to you, I trust my life to you, I give it all, here I am, take me and use me however you If you've done that on the last day, the words of Jesus will expose you for that. If you do not, the words of Jesus will expose you for that. Have you trusted Jesus? Do you have the light of the world shining in your life? Oh, if you haven't, today can be the day. 
that you surrender your life to Jesus on this Christmas Eve of 2023. It would have been easy for me today to come up and and just uh, share fuzzy Christmas stories, talk about the manger, but I've said this to you before. There is nothing greater that I can give you than Jesus. It is the greatest gift of all time. And I wanted to make sure that I took just a few moments of your time today because I know you're busy and I know you got things in front of you to give you Jesus. Don't miss this Christmas season without Jesus. I want the light of the world to shine into your hearts so that you no longer remain in darkness, but that you have the light of life. As we leave here today and we go to our families and our homes to celebrate, make sure that we are celebrating the light of life. Deal? Deal. May the light of Christmas shine brightly on your home today. And as your pastor, I need to tell you, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Father, we come before you today. As your family, as your children, and we stop to consider your bright light that you brought when you came into this world that the angels told the the shepherds about, these glad tidings, this great news that is for all people. We remember you, we think of you, we contemplate upon you not only today on Christmas Eve, but tomorrow, the day that our world celebrates Christmas. We have a greater understanding of what it's about because we understand that you, being light, came to break through darkness. I pray that every person in in hearing of my voice today would enjoy the light of life. So go with us from this place, Lord. Be honored by our celebrations. Be honored by the meditations of our heart, I pray. In Jesus' name.